Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. And I'm Kevin. And we are back. Clan Invasion, Kevin. It's time. It's time. Operation Revival has begun. Oh god. I'm, I'm playing the poor Inner Sphere dogs tonight. Yeah, you never know. You've got the numbers and you've got the tenacity. I got the, I got the, right, the, you the are loyalty playing, to the coordinator. You are playing one of my units tonight, so. It is true. It is true. It's a little it's... Kevin on Kevin hate. It, it is. Kevin designed the whole battle <laughs> tonight. We're very excited. Uh, although I will say, uh, thanks to our uh, patrons out there, uh, on Patreon we put up a poll. And we did, we were like, you know, do you want to see some some clan on clan, Star Adder versus Clan Wolf, or do you want to see what we're about to show you tonight? And th this was the overwhelming response. People are ready for, for Operation Revival. Let's do it. Let's so, invade. So, uh, Kev, what do you have for us tonight? You cooked up a, a brilliant narrative. Why don't you share? Sure. So it's the ninth Bear Guard of Clan Ghost Bear, and they are getting attached as an auxiliary force to Alpha Galaxies and Beta Galaxies as part of their second wave in the invasion. So it's still early on in the invasion, that okay. second push. Okay. Um, they are the, the seedling for a future Omega Galaxy, so you'll, you'll notice different colors on them. But yes. in this initial invasion, they got a little taste of action to observe and report on intersphere tactics, which they will use in the future. Yes, well they are brilliant. Uh, if they survive. Yes. We're just assuming they survive tonight. <laughs> We're, we are assuming, we're assuming you accept my bachelor. This is this is right. <laughs> I'm just declining nah. the planet. Nah. <laughs> we're gonna nuke you. <clears throat> um, oh but my the Akaioni, my free-floating DC battalion, they have been called by high command to investigate and defend the planet of Jarrett out on the marches of the Draconis Combine. Or the dragon. Where mysterious reports are coming in of frenzied activity, you know, aggression and uh, hostilities from an unknown force. They think that maybe bandit kingdoms are on the rise, organizing, Yikes. you know, in a capacity they never have before. So we'll yeah. see. We think this could be quick mop-up work for the DC, but little do they know. Little do they know. Strange mechs have been sighted. Catapults yes. with arms. It's, <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I got so we've got two lances on the Draconis Combine side and a, and a full star on the Ghost Bear side. Yeah. So I think we guesstimated that's supposed to be the rough equivalence in, yeah. in force size. So we matched up the PV based on those right. numbers. Right. We you, and you got both. You did both forces. You got them both right around 300. Yep. And you know, true to lore, right? The clan pilots are better. You know, you have mostly you know mostly ones. I think you have three ones and two twos in terms of skill. I'm packing mostly threes with one two uh, in yeah. my in my command. Awesome. Yes, and you're my awesome. show shot or whatever. I'm so bad with the DC ranks. Uh, anyway, you're right. Show shot. Yeah, something like that. Sure. I don't. Uh, so anyway, so we've got a conquest mission tonight, which is one of the missions in our uh, in our DFA uh, expansion pack. So it was in the second block of missions we released, yeah. and in this one. Uh, it's a symmetrical mission, so we each have two bases. We have a HQ and a fire base. And the goal is to score objective points by capturing your opponent's bases while also controlling at least one of your own. Uh, so, you know, really, it's sort of a game of, you know, chess, you have limited, limited uh, you know, mechs to move around the board here. Do you want to go full defensive? you gotta, you got to get something offensive. I'm going to try to use my numbers to my advantage tonight. But you're, I was looking at your mechs. They're, like, stupid fast. I mean, <laughs> yeah, even the assault. <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, meanwhile, my, uh, my, my assault is yeah. just going to be plodding along. It will be easy terrain, though. we got a nice hill in the center, Yeah. some forests on the periphery. It's, uh, it's going to get bogged down in the swamp here, but yeah. it should make it interesting. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the, uh, the forces that we brought tonight, shall we? Let's do it. All right, so on the side of the Red Devils, I have two lances here. I've got my... Fire support lance, uh, you know, my, my sort of my command element, if you will. Uh, AWS 9M Awesome, a K3 Catapult, a Grand Dragon, and a Whitworth. So all of these mechs, uh, relatively the same speed, the Dragon a little bit faster, uh, but, you know, all of them having some capability at extreme range. So looking to get good line of sight with these mechs. Um, a little bit of overheat in the Whitworth and the Awesome. Uh, and then moving on to my, my Striker Lance here, uh, we've got a Phoenix Hawk 3M. This is a great mech. It's not cheap, uh, but it's, it's fast. It's got damage out to extreme range and can overheat. Uh, I've got a Griffin 3M, another terrific mech. 
Uh, Kevin, you have expensive taste, by the way. Uh, this one, this one, <laughs> <laughs> this one also in the in the thirty point range, but um, very you know great damage output. You know how um, I feel about my heavy lights. It's very true, and and the Phoenix off the Griffin, both packing jump jets, which will be useful in this terrain. Uh, and then I've got a Locust, just uh, a little Locust 1E, uh, blazing fast, uh, you know, some light damage. So I'm going to think about trying to keep this one safe, maybe use it as a late game objective cap. Uh, and then I've got a Hunchback. Um, and the Hunchback here, just your standard variety, a uh, good short range, decent medium range, and nothing beyond that, slow. So this I might employ in more of a defensive role, see if I can get those clanners to come to me. So that is the... Uh, the Akai Oni, uh, the Draconis Combine Force here. Alright, on the Ghost Bear side, we have the Ninth Bear Guard, their Striker Star. Um, the Mist Lynx, Config C, it's nice little fast uh, light Omni with uh, anti-missile system, case, and electronic warfare. Should get in there and cause some havoc. The Viper Prime, that's my just hopping little bunny in there. He's going to be getting in close using that AMS to try to get in there and hopefully do some damage up close to you guys. Um, the Ice Ferret Sea, another kind of fire support. Can it reach out to one extreme range with one damage? Um, has cased, so it's relatively safe loadout. Um, the Hellbringer A, so that's a, more of a kind of a narc missile boat. <clears throat> and then the Executioner Prime, um, that's just there to cause havoc. <laughs> Just destroy <Take> everything. Names. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to be doing the mop-up work. So it's, you know, mixed weight uh, star, uh, but that kind of was what I had to do in order to, to match up against your force. All right, guys, so there you have it. There are the forces. Um, awesome paint jobs on, on the Ghost Bear, uh, and also the Traconis Combine, but we've seen them on the channel yes. before. The Ghost Bear uh, Force, brand new. Love the detail work. Uh, really excited to see these guys in action. And it'll probably get bloody fast, because we do have some alternate deployment rules in Conquest. You can deploy a certain amount of your force within your HQ and your fire base, so might have some, uh, some forward deployment happening here as well. Um, other than that, one important announcement. Guys, uh, we did launch our Patreon, uh, so if you haven't got in on that, check it out. I'm going, to, I'm going to provide the link below. Uh, also, you can find it in the, uh, in the description of this video. Uh, and of course, thanks to everybody who already has uh, contributed to the great cause here. Really appreciate it. Uh, but that said, Kevin, I think we're ready to uh, start banging some heads. What do you think? Let's chip some of that new paint. Let's do it. All right, guys, stay tuned. It's coming right up. Attention defenders of Jarrett. This is Star Captain Andrew Allen of the 36th Striker Trinary, the 9th Bear Guard Cluster of Clan Ghost Bears Omega Galaxy. I issue a badge off for the trial of possession on this facility. What forces will you offer to defend it? This is Tasa Kagami of the Akaon. I don't understand your pirate jargon, but you have intruded on sovereign territory of the Draconis Combine. Shut down your mechs or we will destroy you. I must assume you have refused my batch off, as we suspected you might. Bring your forces in the open and we shall see who among us are equals, and few among you may be accepted as my bondsmen. You should know it is foolish to try and cage a dragon. Salt lance, striker lance, intercept these targets once they come out in the open.
Here we are, the swamps of Jarrett. Mysterious forces moving onto the perimeter to engage the Cronus Combine. Now, a couple of exciting things here. First, we are playing with visibility rules. That means uh, units that are not within visual detection range remain uh, masked as these blip counters here. Uh, and they are marked with dice. Uh, each of my lances are two different colors, so I know which are which. Kevin's also equally marked with, uh, with dice and on the blue bases there. So we don't actually know who's who until they are within visibility range. And of course, we are playing with light fog as we are in the swamp. It's only fitting. So that means 20 inches for visibility. Um, if you do happen to detect a unit, so for example, if you have a beetle active probe or uh, you know the clan active probe, you can see out the 24 inches with your sensor. So if you pick them up and they're outside of that 20 inch visibility range, you take a plus one to your attack roll. It falls into that other modifiers. But as you can see here, I've got my HQ there. I've got my fire base there. Kevin has his HQ there and his fire base here. So things are close, things are gonna get bloody. Per the rules, I was able to deploy 50% of my forces on the headquarters. I chose to do that uh, roughly under 50%, uh, three mechs there. I did put the full 25% out by the firebase. Kevin also deploying some, uh, some advanced mechs here. Now the rest of our forces, two on Kevin's side, three on my side, will move onto the table edge normally as part of turn one. Uh, there really is no explicit uh, deployment after this, right? They just kind of move on uh, per normal. So we're going to get right to that, guys. And as a defender, we don't uh, have to basically move on first. We don't have to roll for initiative. So we'll be right back after movement. We'll see if we have any, any detection. We'll see if we have any shots. It's pretty close already. So stay tuned. Turn one coming right up. Already, the Beagle Active Probe of the Hellbringer coming into play here. So multiple Draconis units have been detected uh, out here on my, uh, my side of the board. Now, I... <laughs> What I did is uh, I moved these three uh, on, the Griffin, the Phoenix Hawk, which are now revealed in a mystery unit. <laughs> um, they all came on. I didn't sprint them intentionally to try to keep them out of range, but um, such is life. I didn't realize this guy had a Beagle Active Probe, or an Active Probe, whatever you want to call it. So that Hellbringer, let's get a nice look at that. Mm, great paint job, Kev. So that guy uh, able to see all of these max, but he is going to take some fire now as he has sort of emerged uh, from the fog. So here's what I need. Um, I am going to need, I'm gonna start with the Whitworth, who's at 20 inches. Uh, the Whitworth needs nines, and I'm gonna use this, this fancy, fancy new Kickstarter, DC dice is my pilot dice. So I need nines here. I get it. All right, so the dragon. So the, uh, the Hellbringer taking one point of damage. I'm sorry, actually, I lied, Kevin. I have two points of damage at long range. With you didn't roll, it didn't happen. Two points of damage at long range. All right, so because the, uh, the Whitworth was the only one within 20 inches, no one else can actually see the Hellbringer. The Force knows it's there. The Force knows it's a Hellbringer, but their they're individual targeting systems... He's been right? radioed in. He's been radioed in, that's it. Um, so in Alpha Strike, normal mech sensor range, I believe, or actually 16 inches? Yeah, that's what For we arms. use. That's what we use, which was derived from, I believe, Tactical Ops, right? Um, one of those. So uh, 16 inches is where it's at. So these mechs unable to, uh, to make visual or sensor contact. So only the Whitworth can shoot, but you, however, Kevin... A man of many mysteries, this Hellbringer able to return He's fire. He's got three damage at long range. That's ridiculous. He's going right back at that Whitworth, seeing that salvo come in. Mm. So I will have a better skill, probably a better chance, but you never know. Five? That's it, just a five. five? I don't have to count my movement, right? No. We don't do that no. anymore? No, no. No, it's insane. Yeah. It's ridiculous. A five, guys. This is what happens when you play against the clans. There it is. All right, so that's three points of damage. That Whitworth gets rocked. Pop, pop, pop. All right, here we are, turn two, after movement. So uh, the Draconis Combine, that's me, lost initiative. So I'll talk about uh, what I did here real quick from a, uh, from a movement perspective. So I still have two units that uh, remain undetected here out on the right flank. 
using this forest and the fog to try to lock down that fire base uh, and stay out of the prying eyes of those, those clan units there on the ridge. Uh, I moved my catapult and my awesome a little bit forward to draw a line of sight to some of those approaching radar blips. Uh, meanwhile, I, I pushed up this trio of uh, mediums and heavies, and I moved the Whitworth behind the control tower there for just a little bit of cover. So I think uh, in terms of shooting, we'll see, but probably that awesome and that catapult are going to be going for that meaty that meaty assault mech coming over the ridge line there. No one else can see anything courtesy of the fog, uh, even though these units uh, have been identified by that forward awesome. All right, so Kev, let's talk about these ghost bears, these, these wily ghost bears. What are they up to? Well, they, they, they tried to issue a few challenges, but you, you pretty much ignored them. We don't know so, what the is. I mean, yeah. the Zelberging and... Uh, yeah, they, they, tried, they tried to, <laughs> you know, call you out on 1v1 combat, and you're like, no. Nah. I refuse. So they are going after your leader. Um, they, they're all obviously cresting this ridge. You can see them all sort of zeroing in on that. Awesome for mm -hmm. a, for something juicy. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't have case. I can't remember. Uh, I don't think he has. Energy? I think he's all E N E. Yeah, I think it's all energy weapons on on that one. Although is that the one with the S R M twos? It's like it's like the Q upgrade or whatever. Yeah, that might have. That might have some streak S R M twos. I don't know why you would do that to an awesome, but you know, hey. Uh, I know I'd be playing you. I know I'd, I know I'd play myself one day. Is this Hellbringer within three inches of the uh, of the firebase here? But regardless of that, not, that, the ice, ice fair it is. Yeah, yeah. I like to call it a Fenris because I'm inner sphere filth. Go for it. Uh, over here, you know, I'm still within three inches on my side. You know, and, and actually, a point of note, we each picked up one objective point last turn for defending our objectives successfully. So that's a good thing. Uh, but now we're moving into shooting. Are you ready, Kevin? I am. All right, so I'm going to start off, since I lost initiative, I'm going to take my super lucky Draconis Combine die here. Uh, now, we're long range of the Executioner, so that's going to be two points from the Catapult, three from the Awesome. We're going to start with the Catapult. He needs eights. This is a, a pretty is open at, shot. Is he at 21 or 20? Uh, he's at... Uh, he's at He's a 20, I believe. I think a few of my guys are at like exactly 21. Well, I can't see a 21 because uh, I, okay. no, I have no probing. Uh, but you can double check if you like. Let's see if I hit first. <laughs> now we can validate. Here we go. Looking for eight. I don't want to measure that one. That's, uh, that's a critical, that's a through armor critical right there and two points of damage. Let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's roll for critical here. 2d6. Well, the clans. Well, the clans. Got a case. <laughs> a six. Oh, all right, what is that? A, uh, no it's a weapon hit, maybe? That's a weapon hit, I believe. Next up, the commander firing uphill at this unknown assault mech. Just watch his buddy in the catapult do some damage. P.S. We checked range. It is, it's like 19 inches, so he's good. Uh, this awesome at about 18 and a half. So three points of damage at long range. The awesome skill two, so only needs sevens, Kevin, to land. Let's see what we can do here. Here we go. Ugh. All right, only one of the PPCs manages to hit. But that's another point on that executioner. Uh, but that awesome pilot now clenching, <laughs> waiting for the retaliation. All right, the Hellbringer is going to be targeting that awesome. He's a skill one, but he's at range where he's just beyond visual. He's got a little of that rain and, and fog obscuring vision, so he's going to be working with a mod there. Um, it's a Draconis combine planet, so most likely it's smog. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four, five for range. Six. six for the weather, yeah. yeah. It's an easy, it's almost too easy. You say that as if I... So there three goes. points of damage. These max. A boom. Hellbringer is. Ice Ferret's taking the second shot at that awesome. He's working with long range as well, so he's gonna be and he is a skill one as well. God. So four fives he needs, I believe. Two damage at long range. Scary stuff, guys. The PPC, I believe, in there. Your PPC. <laughs> Just that. Two more points. Okay. Two more onto that. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> the commander's up, the executioner. 
trying to get the penetrating shot on that awesome. He's got four damage at long range. Skill one. So he's going to be working with that beautiful five number. All right. I hate it. Uh, oh, no! Only two, two pips. <laughs> Only two pips. I just imagine these guys blasting each other yeah. with PPC fire, getting rocked so, all over uh, the place, but still. Where's yeah. the piloting check? <laughs> oh, man, the awesome. Uh, seriously, yeah, he took a ton of damage. Still has one pip left on that armor. But, Kevin, you're not done, are you? Or is that dragonfly out of range? Yeah, they, they are brawlers of a sort. My god, so it's only turn two and already Kevin decimating uh, the lead assault mech. It'd be awesome smoldering right now, but still uh, armor holding steady. Uh, each team scoring yet one more objective point, so two apiece here. Moving on to turn three. Guys, don't go away. All right, here we are. Turn three. Feels like turn ten. Uh, just so much action happening. So I lost initiative again. Here's a quick rundown of what happened on the Draconis Combine side. So all units are now revealed. Uh, the Locust sprinting out from cover here, trying to make maybe an end around on that back objective. By process of elimination, I just put the, the hunch back on the board, um, even though Kevin can't actually draw a line of sight to it quite yet. Uh, I moved my catapult up pretty aggressively, uh, trying to get him in medium range. The Awesome moved down into Depth 1 Water, taking a little bit of cover. Uh, might use that overheat ability as well, benefiting from the water. The Whitworth standing still, looking to lob some LRMs in. And then my, uh, my Strike Trio over here. The uh, Dragon sprinting forward, putting some pressure on that objective. These other two mechs with some decent line of sight to that Hellbringer. So probably going to start there and see if I can knock that out of commission or into force withdrawal. So, Kev, what's on your side? What do you have going on here? Well, the ice fart is trying to hold on to that back objective, staying within. And the Hellbringer is giving a little space, you know, wait, waiting for some reinforcements to come in. Just need some space. Uh, <laughs> but still within a good position to defend that objective. Yep. Uh, Miss Lynx came over the hill, heading towards that objective. And then the Viper and the Executioner are pulling their... Um, their tag team match down the, down the center. Yeah, they're, they're... It's, a, it's a scary tag team, no doubt. All right, well, listen, we're gonna get right into shooting here. Uh, I'm gonna kick us off, and I'm gonna start with the Griffin and the Phoenix Hawk. They're both gonna be firing at that Hellbringer, uh, that large rock affording the Hellbringer partial cover. Each of these mechs skill three, so just right out of the gate, I'm gonna need a six, um, I believe, right? Uh, three, four, five, six, and then long range seven, eight, nine. So I'm gonna need nine to have, which stinks. Uh, and the Griffin here has a long range value of three. That's pretty good. Let's see if I can get some magic going here. Critical hit. What you, Kevin's face? Not pleased. So a through armor critical on the Hellbringer. That's two points of damage. In total, let's see what I can get here. Some juicy Draconis Combine luck. Coordinator surely watching over us here. Uh, critical hit is a nine. I believe that is a, a non-critical, right? So the coordinator not watching yeah. over us. <laughs> Freaking yeah. coordinator. All right, so the Phoenix Hawk following uh, suit here, also firing at that Hellbringer. Uh, Kev, how are we doing on armor with that Hellbringer? Stripped. Stripped. So anything here will generate a nice internal shot, but nine's not an easy number to hit. What do we got? A... Give her to that DC die. So what Catalyst just sent out a survey and they were like, how do you feel about your dice? I'm gonna-, I'm gonna Very read. disappointed. Very, very, very good. <laughs> I feel very good about my yeah. dice. Uh, so that's two hits, uh, two hits. So, and that's gonna generate another critical and it puts the Hellbringer in forced withdrawal. So, what kind of critical can I get here? Hopefully not a 5 or a 9. A 7. So that's a motor hit. That's exactly what you don't want when the mech's enforced withdrawal. Uh, but... No, I do. No, he, now he can't leave. And then, I know, but then he just stands there and shoots and you have ridiculous amounts of damage. Uh, but, alright, so that's not bad for those strike mechs. Now moving over here to these, uh, these bigger mechs in the middle. Gotta figure out what I want to do here. Alright, so the awesome wading through this this swampy river here, uh, turning his sights onto that fast-moving viper emerging from the fog. I'm just an inch outside of 
uh, medium range for the executioner. I'm at 13 inches, 12 inches to the Viper. That allows me to overheat. And I don't know how long this awesome's gonna be around. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do here. So that's gonna be five damage. Very delicious. And I'm gonna need eights to hit this Viper. Um, it has a very high TMM. Uh, oh wait, maybe I need sevens, hang on. Cause I forgot he's skill two, two. Five, six, seven, I need seven. He's skill three. He's uh, the awesome is my is my leader, my fearless Shosa. Oh, I thought they were like three fours though. Uh no. They were all you you, 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 you Yeah, you did you, you did me a service. They're all they're all veterans here. Here we go. I need sevens to hit. So one misses, but that's still four points of damage on that Viper. It's a pretty solid shot. Are we <clears> through the armor at all? Do you have any IF or LRM? I do not. Uh, in fact, I have no special abilities on this awesome. Damn. The anti-missile system... Oh, okay. good. Does nothing. But uh, it does have four pips of armor on the Viper. Yeah. Yeah, so nothing doing there. All right, so i got to figure out what I want to do here next. All right, so this brave little Whitworth here in the back, uh, lobbing a pair of LRM-10s in. We're going to go for that, um, that Viper. I need eights. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, so too much fog, apparently. Too much fog, apparently, guys. No hit there. So now I need to decide this catapult. Viper or Executioner? Tough call, tough call. Here they are in the standoff. I think I'm going to go for that Viper. I, I just want to stay on that target. I know I got lucky on the Executioner. It's just got so much armor left, though. Uh, so I need eights on the Viper here. Uh, so three, four, five, six, and seven, eight for medium range. Here we go. Ugh. Ugh. Smiles. Ugh. Browns. All right, so that, uh, that wraps up the shooting phase. Now's my chance to turn it around. I know, it's true. That could have been pivotal, taking out one of those clan mechs, but we did get the Hellbringer Enforced Withdrawal, which frees up potentially this objective over here next turn if we can fend off that Miss Lynx. The Hellbringer banged up from that salvo coming in at him. He, before he takes off, he's going to try to pop that dragon just across the river there. Uh, he's in medium range. First, he's going to actually try to narc him. Ooh, crafty. So with medium range, it's going to be a one, two, three, five, I believe. Okay. No cover. Uh, well, he's at TMM three, right? So you're going to need a, a four, a six of medium range, six of medium range. course. Well, it would have mattered anyway. Yeah. Uh, so that was the test round. The, the narc beacon misses, but here comes the good stuff. So now he's going to go for his usual. This is going to be four damage oh, God. unloading at this range. Mm. I don't feel good. Got to believe. Got to believe in the bear. Three of them. All right. So three points to that dragon. Not a bad opening salvo. All right, the Miss Lynx came over that hill. He's also going to try to take out that dragon that came sprinting in. Uh, medium range, but uh, he's a skill too. He's one of the rookies, so to speak. Of Genetically the, defective yeah. guys. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Okay. So he needs, what, sevens then? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, jeez. Must be tough. Tough life. It is a tough life. Look at that. Ugh. These dice you gave me. Ugh. Very, dis very dissatisfied. Very, very dissatisfied with the <laughs> dice purchase. Meanwhile, Icefart is going to be trying to snipe that awesome down there in the river. He will get the cover from being submerged in the water there, in, the, in the fresh waters of the river. That's very swampy. <laughs> very muddy water. Uh, but at long range, I have two damage. He's a skill one, so I'm going to be working with four, five. Six, I think I counted. Yeah, I think you're. you Oh, you're long range. Yeah. Yeah, and you're skill one, right? Yeah. God, so insanity. Insanity, I tell you. Oh my God, it's terrible. The fog is thick, Kevin. The viper will be attempting to take advantage of his medium range and attack that awesome. After seeing that horrible shot placed from behind him somewhere. Uh, he's a skill two, so he's going to be two, four, five, six, right? Six. Yeah. It's 
pilot die. You I switched them, right? Oh man. I got like four or three one three or four ones in a row. Executioner Prime. He will be attacking the awesome. Alright. He's a little banged up, but still three damage at this range. Okay. Alright, so three points. And he's your skill one. He's a skill one, right? So one, two, three, four, just five, so I think is all you need here. All I need. Sorry, Kevin, you're gonna That's have been the to hardest get a five. Had all night. You're gonna have to get a five. There it is. Alright, so that's three points of damage on the awesome. Now stay tuned on that because that is an internal shot, Kevin. Smoke billowing from the chassis. Possibly in withdrawal. Uh so three points. We'll put him in withdrawal. <gasps> oh my goodness. Alright, so roll up two d6 for that critical hit. I know I've switched my pilot die. We've noticed. We've noticed. I still think you should give those ghost bear die a chance. They just, Never. They just need to be warmed up. A six. All right, so that's a weapon hit. Weapon. Uh, that's a that's a good shot on a withdrawing mech, in my opinion. So Especially that, an awesome. Yeah, awesome's going to be hard pressed uh, to to contribute to this fight. So uh, you salvaged it at the end there. Uh, what do we have going on? So you have control of the base. I have control of at least one of mine. So it's a three three game. We have uh, each have one mech in withdrawal, yeah. and uh, and some damage across the board here. So turn four, it's going to be a big one. Stay tuned, guys. It's coming right up. All right, here we are. It's turn four. Lots of things happening. Tactical movement across the board from uh, both the Ghost Bears and the Combine. Uh, so I was real excited. I rolled a ten on initiative, and then Kevin using his Ghost Bear dice actually rolled an eleven. <laughs> so it's it's possible, folks. Uh, but initiative only <laughs> initiative only uh, I'll tell you what I did here so uh, the awesome is enforced withdrawal um, by rule uh, our house rule they have to move at a minimum half their speed you know unless they're impeded by terrain but he was able to basically do half of his speed rounded down uh, backwards in the river and get closer to that home edge the Whitworth shuffled a little bit but still within that stationary uh, space so he's gonna get a little buff to his gunnery uh, my strike trio, nobody sprinting, everybody moving in. My Griffin and Phoenix Hawk have line of sight to both the Ice Ferret and this Koshi and the Hellbringer. Uh, the dragon there has its eyes on the Hellbringer. The Catapult uh, moved after the Dragonfly, was able to maneuver behind him. Uh, he, is in, he is in melee range, Kevin, so I could, I could do a little kick or punch something along those lines, but I may just shoot at short range. We'll see. Uh, the hunchback revealed itself, came around, <laughs> exposed itself <laughs> from the forest, <laughs> came out of the forest. Uh, he's got three points at medium range. He's looking at that dragonfly. Uh, and then the locust sprinting around back here, but that ice ferret uh, still has him in his front arc. So we'll see. Uh, now, I want to begin shooting here. There's a couple of things that I know uh, I'm going to do, and I always start with the uh, the units that, that have the least amount of options. So the, the only one that the Hunchback can really see here is that Dragonfly. So the Hunchback is going to need an 8. Uh, skill 3, a TMM of 3 on that Dragonfly, and then a medium range uh, using our, you know, our optional rule. The, the long range targeting is plus 2, 3 points, 8, here we go. So just one point of damage on that Dragonfly. It's a crit chance. It is internal. It is exciting. Here we go. 2d6. And 11. Warning. Critical hit engine. It is indeed. So that's a, that's a nice shot uh, from, that, uh, from that hunchback. AC 20. Mauling this thing. Alright, so I'm going to use the Whitworth next. Firing at the dragonfly. I need 8s to hit. So can I, can I put this thing... Send it to Valhalla. Is that where the ghost bears go? I'm not sure. Here we go, looking for eights. And he got it. The Whitworth coming through. One point of damage to that dragonfly. So the dragonfly is destroyed. First clan mech of the invasion goes up in smoke. All right, so gives me some options here. All right, the awesome up next. The commander barking orders as he fires what remaining PPCs he has. I can't overheat as I withdraw it out of medium range, so only two points of damage with the weapon hit. Uh, it's going to need a four, five, six, seven here. Here we go. 
I got him. So two points. I'm rolling hot tonight, Kev. So two points on the Executioner. I'm going to roll right into that Catapult. I'm just going to torso twist to the right. And at short range, open up on the Executioner. So the Catapult is going to need a 3, 4, 5. He needs a 6. Here we go. That's another four points. Short range barrage from that catapult. The armor of that executioner still Stripped. holding firm, though. Unbelievable. Uh, the locust unable to shoot. So now we're looking over here at this little strike trio. Let's see what they can do. All right, Dragon up next. He needs sevens to hit this Hellbringer. Just unloading everything he can. The Grand Dragon, I should say. So ERPPC, I believe, LRM10, couple of mediums. Not a bad design. Lands two of the three. So two more points on that Hellbringer. Kevin, is that? I think that's enough. Is that enough? That is enough. So another clan mech destroyed. So we might try to take this Koshi out. Could cap an objective, let's see. All right, so the Griffin and the Phoenix Hawk both targeting this finely painted Mist Lynx here. Uh, They're both going to need eights. The Griffin does three points of damage. The Phoenix Hawk does two, but the Phoenix Hawk can overheat, and I'm going to do it because this is uh, this is critical here. So here we go. We need those eights. Don't be disappointed. Okay. This this. <laughs> This is big. Griffin now. Here we go. Uh, that was an entire round for me. I feel you. Uh, that would have been devastating had I taken out that Miss Lynx, because I think it only has like three total pips of armor and structure, right? So, total whiff. The mech is moving too fast. The ECM, perhaps. Uh, just ducking and weaving. So that is, that's brutal. Uh, but, I shouldn't say that, because yeah. I actually destroyed two mechs. Yeah. You know. However, Kevin, you do get sweet retaliation. The ghost bears, uh, the ghost bears are coming, so guys, stay tuned. Kevin, Kevin's warming up his dice now. All right, we're going to kick off the festivities with that backpedaling Hellbringer, who's well, conveniently about to go up in flames. Yes. He doesn't know yet, though. <laughs> He Nor should he care. He's gone to Valhalla. For the con. Uh, so, he's going to be going for that dragon. I believe we'll get a cover point. Yeah. And he's got a two, so three, yeah, four. four, five, six. six. Yeah. I don't. I did take a weapon hit before. Uh, actually, first let me, I'll, I'll try to narc you. Why not? Why not? Uh, I said six, right? Yeah. Did he take a weapon hit or a motive hit? I think he took a motive. He took a weapon. Uh, you're yeah, right. This, Sorry, yeah. I'm looking at the wrong card. Yep, so your narc hits, which means you're going to get an extra point of damage, right? Yeah. Because you do have the, what do you have, the SRM so special? Narked. I'll mark him up after. Yeah. Uh, so one point of extra for anything with an IF or LRM or SRM. Yep, ability very cool. With. Uh, so he did, he only took the motive, so he's actually going to be hitting with five, five dice, right? Eesh. Eesh. And I believe the dragon, I'm just kind of leaning over to see here, dragon only has five pips in total, two armor, three structures. So this could be, this could be glory. <laughs> a glorious end. <laughs> there it is, it's a glorious end! I feel good. I, it's, wor it's, a wor it's worth his life. It's worth it. It's worth it. Feels good. So that dragon... We'll see that. It's probably going to be nothing. The but... dragon goes up in smoke. It's destroyed. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. You only, as I said, he only had five pips, two armor, three structure. He's wow. gone. He's wiped out. Wiped out from the face of the earth. Obliterated, Kevin. All right. I'm going to have the Miss Lynx continue the action. He's going to be firing now on the Phoenix Hawk. Um, medium range. Working with... Uh, two skill here, okay. so four, five, six. Okay. Two damage, potentially. Right. Oh bam! All right, so that Phoenix two Hawk hits. taking some uh, taking some paint chips there, but that's fifty percent of his armor. All right, the ice fire is going to try to pile onto the momentum down the the corner there. So he's turning and firing on that Phoenix Hawk. Mm. He's got long range though, but it's still two damage. Okay. And he's a skill one, 
So that will be, I believe, a six. Yeah. So. All right, here we go. Feeling better. Things are looking up. I'm too late in the game, possibly, but. Yeah, well, you know, I feel we're morale. Up. Morale is up. But we feel like you guys are right. Uh, <laughs> all right, so two more points to the Phoenix Hawk. It's stripped of armor. Still got two nasty mechs in the middle there. What will you do? All right, the Viper slash Dragonfly, he will be um, spending his final moments thinking he's smart and going for that uh, hunchback who emerged and, and fired at him. So torso twisting, firing down the hill there. Um, he's a skill two. I believe you have a one there, so three. Yep. He needs fives. All right. Well, Doable. Many would say very doable. Of course, I have these dice, so just one hit. Oh, God, the hot streak. It's like if you need sixes, it seems to do well. Fives, not so much, but... They, they board extra deep on that one hit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, the, the they hunchback... They don't do deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Is that a yeah. Gandalf reference? Yeah. Uh, so, the hunchback taking one point of damage. The executioner is all that's left here, Kev. Yeah. What do you he's think? The one with that, he's the one with that weapon hit. Yes. Uh, so he's only going to get three out of it, but he's definitely going to try to go for that. I got to go for the guy in my face. I got to go for that. The catapult? Catapult. All right. It's too juicy of a target. Yeah. I mean, otherwise you're just going to follow me wherever you go. He's the, I got the slowest guy on the field there. Um, so yeah. So close range. Three. Yeah, I think that's all you need is a Failable. Is failable with my one pick. Failable, but it seems unlikely. All right. All right, so there it is. So three points of damage into that catapult. Uh, that knocks off more than 50% of its armor, or actually just about 50%, uh, but not internal yet. All right, so Kevin, you've completed shooting. Some now, damage inflicted, but I've lost two now. So the two, the Dragonfly and the Hellbringer are out of action. Yeah. So we're still each defending our objectives. Nobody has captured anybody else's. Um, so it's a 4-4 game, Kev. So we'll see what happens. Guys, turn five is coming up. Can the Ghost Bears pull it out? Let's see. It's turn five. We're just wrapping up movement here. I can't believe it's only turn five. There's been so much carnage and death. Uh, I guess maybe... Speak for yourself. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Well, I feel like there's been card. It's only two mechs that I destroyed, but it just feels like a lot, I guess. Um, so, I lost initiative for the fifth straight turn. Fourth straight turn, I guess. Um, Hunchback retreated, trying to keep this objective controlled, putting some forest in between me and any, any predatory bears. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the catapult had to move before the executioner, so I, I just kind of skirted around him and pivoted myself to try to make it harder for him to get at my rear arc. Um, I have eyes on that ice ferret, though, because I moved the locust around here, uh, is looking at that objective. If I could take the ice ferret out with some lucky shots, that would be huge. Back here, the Whitworth moved just enough to get its TMM up. The Awesome uh, doing its thing, retreating, had to move out of the, uh, the river this time, though to satisfy that forced withdrawal rule. Uh, and then here in the, the Cauldron of Carnage, destroy, destroyed mechs, uh, the Mislinks jumping into the river, the Phoenix Hawk jumping into the river, and the uh, the Griffin moving in as well. It's a splash party. It's, it's, a, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, so, Kevin, what did you do? Ah, oh, well, the Ice Ferret has kind of been doing his sentinel duty. Uh, yeah. Pivoting around to get that intercept that locust that came around the corner. Um, the executioner is going for broke, just pushing into enemy territory, seeing you know buddies dying around him. Comms are going black, so he he gave a, he gave a slight turn though. He's turning back to hopefully land a shot in the rear of that catapult as he digs deeper. Yeah, it looks like you got into. Um, the and as you said down there, the mislinks decided to hop into the river. Um, Ideally t in a, a defensive position, but seeing as everybody's piling on, you know, it's, you know, it's it could be a welcome thing for him. Well, with uh, a glorious partial, death, with partial cover, I mean, it's a plus five just to hit him with the jump. 
uh, the bump yeah. to the TMM and everything else. So that's gonna that's gonna be a hard shot. Um, so we'll see what we can do here, guys. But I, of course, again, lost an issue. That means I shoot first. So what I'm gonna do is start with this awesome. This awesome is gonna fire on the executioner. I'm gonna overheat. Gives me four dice. Uh, so the awesome is skill two. The executioner is still claiming a nice plus two on the TMM. So that's a four, and then I'm at medium range. It's a six, Kevin. So. How many times has he overheated? Uh, well, the one time he overheated was in water, so I bled that off pretty quickly. That is four points of damage to that executioner. Uh, I think that's going to be a critical hit, right? I think that's going to be the game, yeah. Because he's going to be in withdrawal as well. Okay, here we go. Critical hit. Critical hit. Gyro. Seven, that's a motive hit. Uh, keep kneecapping these guys. Whitworth firing some missiles. He's eight. Yeah, it's destroyed. It's destroyed. That's it. Okay, I did not realize uh, that's the end of the executioner. All right, well, let's see if we can we can finish this this star of unknown invaders off here. The catapult eyeing up that ice ferret is within medium range, uh, so it's only three points of damage here for the catapult. He's going to need a five, six, seven to hit. You get the right dice. There we go. Critical hit. Oh boy. It is, it is an unlucky night. Uh, we should get these dice checked. <laughs> I, I love these idea. dice. Uh, so another what a dragon. Three, three points and another through armor critical. Let me roll this one up. Here we go. That is a seven, so yet another motive hit. All right, so this griffin firing a PPC missiles across at the ice ferret. See if I can peel it off the objective. I need eights though, not an easy hit. Though I have been hot. I have had a hot, hot hand here, Kevin. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. I spoke too soon. Uh, okay, so now, though, the Locust. Two points at short range. Um, so he's going to need three, four, five, six. Six is to hit. Do you want to check that? Is that three inches? Because this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Could be. What do you think? It's, it's a survey. No. No, it's at four? I believe so. Yeah, it's just out, just out. Yeah, just over three. Okay, so it's only one point. That's a big deal. Uh, so need sixes, gets it, one point of damage. So the uh, the Phoenix Hawk attacking the Mislinx here. Uh, so I'm at a basically a skill four from the heat. I need nine tens. I need tens to hit you, Kevin. Almost. Almost, but no cigar. All right, so the Combine... Feeling good about this. They've completed their shooting. Kevin? Combat are very satisfied with their dice. <laughs> <laughs> they feel great about their dice. Uh, their dice order is phenomenal. So now we'll move on to the Ghost uh, Bears. The Ice Ferret's going to kick it off with uh, shot into the Locust. Okay. Um, so medium range, we said, right? Yeah, just so we're short. One, two, three, six. Yeah, it's your magic number. Two hits. So two points, that Locust is stripped of armor. Alright, <clears throat> the Mislinx is going to go for broke on the Phoenix Hawk, why not? Alright. Uh, two damage, short range, but, and a skill two. Okay. So we're working with five. Six for the water. Uh, seven for... Range. Oh yeah, 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 that's right. So wait a minute, right. I have, uh, so you're, you're a skill two? Mm-hmm. Right, so two, six, seven. Yeah, I think seven, right? What am I missing here? Nothing. That's it. Sevens. Roll them up. May the force be with you. <laughs> the ghost bear be with you. Oh, man. Oh, no. That one. The ghost bear. Haunts me. The That's tough. Haunts so that to Phoenix Hawk right. did only have two pips of structure left, if I recall. Uh, but that is, uh, that is that. So now the Executioner, before he ejects, screaming clan profanities. All right, the Executioner going for his uh, final shot of the evening. Uh, into the rear of that catapult, though. So he's going to get an extra die, which brings him back to his four after his weapon damage. All right. Um, I think that's six inches. 
Not three for sure. No, so, yeah, it's medium range. So two, three, fours. Fours. All right, here we go. Do you have any overheat? No. That's crazy. So the Hellbringer was the only one that overheat. Oh, yeah. I do like a good overheat, but... Oh, four damage. Four damage. That's an internal shot. Kevin, can you make the con proud? <laughs> Seven, so that's a motive hit. Damaging the leg actuators on that catapult and the final salvo there. Hmm. So just the ice ferret and the mist links remain. Turn six, is it happening? Stay tuned and find out. As every true ghost fair should. There's no, there's no surrender and no retreat. Uh, so, Kevin, uh, trying to pull something out here, trying to take as many of these snakes as he can with him. Uh, so, I lost initiative. I mean, honestly, I think they're just trying to retreat, but I don't think, I don't think the Combine's going to let them retreat at this point. You know, they we'll want see. blood for blood. We'll see what happens here. So, uh, I lost initiative. Basically, what I did on my side, uh, Atlas continues to withdraw the Hunchback, standing still, holding that objective down. The Whitworth just shuffling around a little bit in the backfield. Uh, the Phoenix Hawk jumping over the river to stay with the Miss Links. The Griffin just kind of moving back a little to make sure he's within three inches of that base. Uh, and the Locust in a dance of death here, um, but being, of course, outmaneuvered. So, Kev, tell us, what did you do? Yeah, you pretty much called it. You know, the, the dance around that back objective with the Ice Ferret and the Locust. And then the uh, Miss Lynx jumped out, which the Phoenix Hawk followed suit with. So right. they they are slowly pulling off of their objectives in a way, um, but I think they, they see that it's a fight to the death. Fight they're to the they're death. not going to be able to outrun this firepower. And so much death there is uh, on this battlefield. So I have four shots to make here. Uh, I'm going to start with the Phoenix Hawk, who did bleed off his heat last turn for being in the river. Uh, he jumped, and I think we, we, Kevin and I talked about this off camera, both of us forgot to incorporate the penalty for jumping uh, in our shots last round, uh, but, didn't matter. We, but we didn't matter, we, we all missed anyway. So the Phoenix Hawk needs a, you're at a, well, you're at a four, right? So I, I'm at a, basically a five, nine, ten. I need tens this time, I really needed twelves last time. So here we go, two points, looking for tens, not happening. Uh, this Griffin... At short range, uh, also going to need, let me think about this now, three, eight, nine. I only need nines with the Griffin. How is that possible? <laughs> so late, Kevin. My brain does not work. So you're at a short range? You're at a four, right? So three, seven, oh, eight. I need eight. So I'm sorry, right? Short range. I'm not a medium. Uh, so I need eights. Here we go. Another miss. Ugh. The ones coming around the table. Can Clan Ghost Bear pull this out or escape? <laughs> Either way, that Miss Lynx is yeah. pretty fast. Uh, the Catapult K3 firing at the Fenris. Now, uh, Fenris is at a two. I'm at a three, so that's five. We're at medium range. So sevens. Uh, the K2 does three points. K2 suffering a little bit from a motive hit, so really wasn't able to close that gap. Here we go. Uh, I feel like your luck has come around. We're gonna go swap this dice out for a better one. Now the the I'm locust. Gonna, I'm not gonna sweep the table with an ice fart and dislikes. <laughs> listen, it could happen. Uh, the locust. If I can land both points here, it'll put the, the ice ferret in forced withdrawal, uh, possibly even kill it. Uh, the locust needs sixes, Kevin. Here we go for the dragon. Gets them both. So two points. Does that ice ferret go up in smoke? No, but he is running. All right, so he is running. Also a critical hit, though. Which so, will give you the objective. It will give me the objective. Critical hit is an eight, which is a weapon hit oh, on that nice. ice ferret. It is currently a five to four game, by the way. Uh, last round, I contested both of Kevin's objectives, and I was defending my own. So it's a five to four game right now. With this objective under my control, that could firmly put me in the lead here. We'll start with the ice ferret. Just because that's where the action is. Let's do it. You're going for blood. <clears throat> yeah. So he's a skiller one, so... Four. Five. Five. That's it. Oh god, this is not your lucky number. 
Yeah, you got, got him. Because he just yeah. sneezed that one. You got him. So that locust is destroyed, Kevin. Uh, vengeance is sweet. So once again, two mechs laying into each other viciously. And now we'll move on to the Mist Lynx. Um, might as well just go for that Phoenix Hawk. They've been trading blows. Uh, he is surprisingly healthy. Yeah. Uh, but he's got a very tough shot here. Skill two, three, sixes I'm counting. Yeah. All right, both two hits on that Phoenix Hawk. Two hits Hawk. on that Phoenix Hawk. Now, Kevin, that Phoenix Hawk is destroyed. <laughs> Uh, so, wow. right, uh, I believe that, I believe that Phoenix Hawk is down. So, the Phoenix Hawk is down, the Locust is down. That is, uh, that's... But that Griffin's capping, right? That Griffin contesting. Is, that Griffin is still contesting. So, uh, that is, uh, that's interesting. So that means at the end of this round, it will still be a, uh, so what is it, turn six, right? You'll have... I'll have two points on me. Yeah. Because it now moves to a 6-4 game. You're right. So, so I think we're going to be withdrawing after this turn, but I, I feel better about the punitive damage <laughs> I caused for retreat. I I, like that it. gives them the window for retreat, because otherwise that locust would attract the ice ferret down. That's very true. So the ice ferret and the mist is able to tear off into the sunset. Uh, but guys, stick around. We're going to wrap this thing up, and then we'll get into the after action report. All right, here we are on the battle grid of Jarrett. Small gas mining facility and administrative complex deep in the swamps. Of interest here to these ghost bears, the Draconis Combine responding with the, the Red Devils, uh, and they did quite a good it's job. Nasty that they are known for. It is, it is true, and they, uh, they did quite a good job of repelling these clan invaders. Although, uh, they did take some serious casualties here towards the end there, once Kevin's dice woke up. Three mechs destroyed, one enforced withdrawal. So, in that regard though, guys, it was a pretty good battle. Obviously, lots to learn here about how to balance these, these forces. I think uh, if you're just doing straight mech on mech, the advantage might go to the numbers, but that might also be the way the missions are set up. So we'll talk about all of that stuff in the act after action report. Stay tuned, that is coming right up. All right guys, there it is. Of Alpha Strike, the first of its kind clan invasion with the new miniatures. So exciting. So exciting, Kevin. We've been waiting a year for this. It's, it's, it's exciting when you're winning. <sighs> but good. yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I, I finally got to put some new minis on the table. Yeah, I like them. They looked great. Um, I got to play some clan mechs, some omnis. Yeah, yeah. But. So let's let's review. Let's, let's talk review. about that. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so we, we talked a lot off camera before we got into this. We were just sort of talking about various things. The first thing we talked about is, is the numbers game, right? Yeah. And, and I think when you're playing an objective-based mission... Specifically one where you have to cap like three to four points or yeah, more. Yeah, right. You know, numbers... Which some of our missions have, not all, but... Yeah, numbers matter. Yeah. You know, like I'm thinking like a seized ground or an area denial, like where you really need to kind of diversify and right. spread it's out. It's not about killing power, it's just about presence. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and a little bit of both, right? I mean, I think I think if earlier in the game, if the dice would have gone your way on that one turn where you missed yeah, with all like five Turn mechs, four or five was just... Could have been, could have been very different, but... Um, I was even battered, beat up. I was starting to, to come back right. towards the end, but it just yeah. wouldn't, it wouldn't have been enough... No. Even if I saw like the executioner out there, I think he would just got overwhelmed. You know. Yeah. You know, the other thing I wondered is, you know, if we um, if we built the force where like there wasn't an executioner, but something a little cheaper, right? And maybe one with all skill. <laughs> right. The executioner traded in for like twenty elementals. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you ran a bunch of elementals, right? And even like, is the skill one worth it over the skill two? Yeah. You know, because it's a big point hike. You know, it's probably fifty or sixty points yeah. or whatever. You know, just in that in that upgrade. Well, I guess you only had it on three mechs, but still, um, you know. So, so it's interesting, like how to tweak the forces because when you're talking low numbers of mechs with high skill, if you have a bad roll, 
I mean, you're like, you've just blown yeah. like 70 points of, of you know. Right. Of, and I think this is more just to test the yeah. um, sort of theory that, you know, two lances are equivalent to a star as yeah. far as general firepower right. of the time. Yeah. Right? Cannon yeah. or lore or whatever. Yeah, it's it's. I believe that's true. Right? That's roughly what they. Try that's to what they counter say. it with. That's what they say. Um, and you know, when I look at the force that you pulled together here, um, you know, it wasn't a big force. Only one assault mech. It was mixed. You know, I went from light to assault. I kind of right. had two medium, but then it was a light, a heavy, um, yeah. and assault. Yeah, and then on my side, I think it was just one heavy, right? One one assault, one heavy. I think it was oh no, two, two heavy, heavies, the catapult and the dragon. Yeah. Yep. And then, and then me. So it wasn't a very big. And mostly medium. You know, I wonder if, like, you know, because Tom, last battle report, where he had an assault lance, and that was four mechs and was 250. You know, so you could play a, probably a beefy inner sphere. And I'm wondering maybe if closer to even numbers would be would be better. Like, if you're running eight units, but maybe right. it's mechs and, and right. elementals, and I'm running some vehicles, and, you know, like. And I think we'll have more options over time. This was mostly dictated by what I had painted so yes, far. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which was those five clan ghost bear, other than elementals, but I wanted to kind of we just wanted to kind of test the yeah. the omnion mech theories. Yeah. Yeah, but it was it was really fun, um, and you can definitely like from a uh, gameplay perspective, the way the omni mechs play, it's so different because they're all sort of like glass cannons. Right. Luckily in Alpha Strike, I think it's a heck of a lot easier because you don't have to worry about a lot of the rules with the newer tech. Right. Um, right. But still, they hit hard, but as far as armor and structure, they're not that far beyond what you're bringing from the inner sphere side. So if like, not less. Losing one of my Omnis was like yeah, a yeah. huge force multiplier for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, because right, yeah, I mean, I'm already starting with almost double the number. Um, you know, other than that, mission was fun. You yeah. know, board was good. Um, I like the theme and the, the layout of this one. There was yeah. a lot of options, even though... Um, you know, I felt like I had. I feel, I feel like both of our defensive situations were ideally placed, like great, great objective locations. Yes. You know, because even you, with with how well you were doing, had a lot of trouble getting to that one that was behind the river. Yeah. This one was behind the hill, pretty much. You know, in a very good <laughs> position for me. I think the yeah. easiest one to probably go after would be yours in, at home, but. Right, I had I, to go through waves of. I had that's where I chaff. stacked most of my most of my guys. I think if I did any, anything different, having to replay this whole thing again, it probably would have just been to. Once I saw you basically heavy loaded that side, almost give up that objective or hold it with a token, one light. Yeah, and just power rush this one. Even if I I went behind by like one point early, I think I would have made up for it in the long run by by. Charging your that's what your I thought center. you were gonna do here, which is why I, I debated it for a while. But then it your was mechs like, are so fast. Yeah. I thought you were just gonna come in real hard up the gut, uh, and I was just gonna it was just gonna be like a, a wave after wave of <laughs> of, of clan uh, of clan one omni. yeah <laughs> a, 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 yeah wave after wave of a single omni mech doing seven points of damage <laughs> per hit. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was a good game. I I definitely had. You, I mean, had, you had several throw armor criticals. Oh my god, I had three. I saw the dragon a lot. Yeah, I mean, I had at least three. Our our dice surveys are <laughs> polar opposite. <laughs> Love my dice catalyst; they're great. Um, Although those were your dice, I was using Aaron's ghost bear dice. Maybe they don't resonate with you. Uh, they're not. They're not attuned. Yeah, they're, not attuned. <laughs> they're not attuned to Kevin yet. Um, but they, yeah, they I, know me. They're like, no, I know. I <laughs> programmed all my <laughs> dice. I actually think the weather may have helped me. Um, in retrospect, you know, even though I had a lot of extreme damage, mm -hmm. I think with your higher gunnery, you would have chewed me up at long and yeah. extreme. Damage. I mean, I don't, I didn't mind paying for the ECM on that miss links, but I just don't know that it, the way we kind of were spread out here, right? Because we had, yeah, I had twenty five percent for me was one unit up there, two units here, the other two back here. Um, he really couldn't provide. That's why I kind of pushed him up the middle, hoping he provides some more sensor cover. Yeah, right. For that pack, but it was just we, we we were already so packed in from you also being advanced to your objectives that uh, the espionage game did not yeah. last very long. Yeah, and it's interesting. Like, you know, ECM has zero effect on standard sensors, which if you read the books, right, it's always like jamming and like messing with everybody's sensors. And I haven't played MWO or MW5, but an MW4 it would also reduce the range of stock sensors, right? Right. Uh, as well as interfere. Wasn't with it just like visual only? 
you could detect if, if you had uh, ECM up, I think it was like 500 meters or something, you could see them, whereas normally it was 1,000. Detect them on, on you know. Um, speaking of mechs, a couple of things. First of all, guys, if you want to get some clan invasion action, I have been told that late November it will be available at Ares Games and Mini. So, keep your eyes open for that. I believe the box set will be available. I'm not sure about the Lance Packs. I will let you know as soon as I know. Check out his Facebook page. I'm sure he'll have updates there. Uh, and of course, for any of your Battletech needs, uh, whether it's Ironwind medals, Army Painter stuff, whatever it should be, books, right? Some great novels out, source books. Uh, you can get all of that over at Ares Games and Minis. Uh, once again, thank you to our patrons. Uh, this battle report was brought to you in sweet 1080p. Kevin, in 1080p, we're in high def, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our patrons. So, guys, thank you so much uh, for helping the channel out. We really appreciate it. Uh, and if any of our other viewers out there want to get on that bandwagon, uh, just check out our link um, at uh, Patreon slash DFA Wargaming. Uh, and, of course, if you haven't, please subscribe. Helps out the channel. Yeah. Makes us feel good inside. Uh, you can also check out our soundtrack. Check out our website. What else? Facebook. Check out our YouTube channel. Yeah, if you, if you haven't <laughs> checked that out. Uh, lots of great stuff there. So, uh, that's all I got, though. Kevin, any closing thoughts? None. Prepare for wave three of the invasion. <laughs> I'm, I am afraid of the elementals. Because they get those anti-mech yeah. attacks. They don't take that stupid penalty to hit because they're battle armor. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the, uh, the first sort of foray into the clan invasion. Uh, we've been talking about campaign maybe in December, uh, yeah. at least getting it started in December over here. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. But that's it. I'm all done. All right. Guys, thanks Great so much game. for watching. Yeah, man. Excellent job as always. Guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.